What up, comic book fam? Happy new comic book day, October 13th, 2021. Operation Cut My Stack to 10 Books was mostly a success. Let's get right into it. Starting off with DC Comics, as usual, we have The Joker, number eight, from my favorite guy doing it, James Tynan IV. And one of my favorite guys, as far as art, Guillaume Mark. I really love the way Guillaume draws The Joker. And I really love the A cover from him this week. It's a great cover with Vengeance uh, choking him. I liked this issue. I'm really interested in Vengeance and uh, her origin, and we got a piece of that in this. But there's a bit of a twist to her there at the end in terms of her motivations. Really curious about what they're gonna do with her, what kind of character she's gonna be, and whether or not she's going to have any kind of long-term legs in the DC universe. So locked in on this one, love me some James Tynan. And I love Guillaume Mark's art. He is killing it. And then I had to go ahead and pick up that B cover from George Molina. I really like the way this one looks, so I had to have it. That is the reason why I went over 10 books. I went to 11 books because I had to have this B cover. Moving on to Marvel's comics, we've got Eternals Forever. I have been following the Eternals stuff, trying to get reacclimated to them. I am really interested in the movie that's coming out here next month, I think. Uh, so really excited about all that, been following this. This seemed to be a bit of a, a history, kind of, hey, if you don't know anything about the Eternals, uh, let us teach you a little bit something about them. So if you don't know anything about that, this might be an interesting one to grab. As far as the story, though, it wasn't anything that I'd really write home about, uh, but it did have this kind of an old school feel to it. Like I was reading an old school comic, so I kind of like that. Next up, we've got Kang the Conqueror number three. Now I have backlogged this one since the first one, so I have not read two yet. I know we've got some action with Ravona Renslayer in this one that made number two kind of hot. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. I like Michael Nemundo's art here on the cover though. Next up with Marvel Comics, we've got Amazing Spider-Man 76. This is another series that's been backlogged for me, but uh, Amazing Spider-Man was one of those things I just wanted to have a long box of, so I'm collecting this series as a whole. Uh, and here we are with 76. Eventually, I will read it and have an opinion about it, but I'm kind of waiting for something to really happen before I dive back in. Still with Marvel Comics, we've got Shang-Chi number five. This has not been my favorite read, but it's been good enough for me to continue in with it. I'm a little interested in the family dynamics with Shang-Chi, and I'm a little interested in what he's gonna do with some Iron Man armor. He's, he's not exactly a, a friend to the Avengers, it seems like, he even steals from them, so. Uh, that's interesting to me. Locked in for number five. Moving on to Image Comics, we've got the six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton. This is another fun read that I'm just sticking with for the fun. Imagine Chuck Norris was a big douchebag and he had done a bunch of shows with a bunch of sidekicks. Uh, eventually he dies and these sidekicks are the only ones really trying to figure it out. Uh, because everybody hates him so it's fun it's quirky i've been finding it humorous enough to stick in it with it so here we are with issue five moving on to dark horse comics we've got black hammer reborn number four now i have been reading a ton of jeff lemire it seems he's really popped on to my radar with a ton of books this being one of them this was recommended to me by two uh channels that i follow uh, alternative city comics my comic book dad lorenzo had mentioned that he was a big fan of Black Hammer. And then comics will break your heart. Jennifer over there had mentioned that she really loved the Black Hammer series. So that was enough for me to jump in on it. And here I am with it and enjoying it. So I'm enjoying this kind of story about uh, a mom who's kind of longing for the days of when she was a, a superhero. Uh, and the interesting part about that, I'm an old person. It kind of has an old person story to it. So. Here we are with number four. Next up, still with Dark Horse Comics and still with Jeff Lemire, we have May's book number two. Now I have read this one and again, it's another really interesting uh, book. Uh, it really hits home to me as a, a father of two kids. We have the story of a, a, a dad who lost his child 10 years ago and hasn't really gotten over it, which I don't imagine I would either and he's dealing with that kind of going through the motions of his life uh, when he gets a call from what he thinks to be his daughter 
and he thinks that she is trapped in this maze. So I don't know what that means. We don't really hear what happened to their kid 10 years ago. So we don't know, is this really his kid? Is it possible that his kid's still alive? I really don't know what's going on, but I'm interested in what the, the answers to those questions are. And as a father, really, it's got me in my feelings, just that part of it. I identify with this guy. I think I would be just like him in terms of my decisions if that happened to me. And so I'm locked in on this one. Loving me some Jeff Lemire. Next up from AWA Upshot, we've got ETER. What if aliens were on Earth and they had an emergency room? So this is uh, Men in Black meets, you know, ER, you know, or one of those emergency room shows, Grey's Anatomy or something. I don't watch any of them, but uh, this is what that one's about. I read this one. The art kind of threw me off at first because, you know, the art is not like the cover. It's, it's much different uh, from that. So I, I opened the book and I was kind of thrown back by the art. It wasn't what I expected. But once I got over that and really just honed in on the story, I, you know, I liked it. it. It's exactly what you expect. We have a, a doctor who works upstairs who is obviously very good at their job in terms of medics and with dealing with people. And then she finds out uh, through chance about this below hospital where they only deal with aliens and basically gets offered to sign on. So. Uh, that's the gist of it. If you're interested in that at all, I would give this one a look. I don't know how I feel about it really after reading the first one, uh, but I am definitely going to stick around for number two. All right, and last but not least, still with AWA Upshot, we've got Telepath number two. Um, I wasn't so sure about this one reading number one, and then I got to the end of number one, and I was like, okay, all right, that's enough for me to get in. And I'm definitely locked in after reading number two as well. There was this solar flare uh, and it knocks a bunch of people out for a period of time. And when they come back up, uh, some of them, not all of them have psychic abilities and can read each other's minds. Uh, and so I guess this is caused by, um, you know, the flare unlocked something, uh, some unused parts of our brain. So the, the, real, the, the reality of it, like the idea that, you know, the possibility of something like that being real has really got me locked in on it. And I like the setup that we have with the story so far. So I'm definitely coming back for number three on telepaths. All right, as usual, let me know down below what was your read of the week? What was your cover of the week? For me, cover of the week, I'm gonna go with Guillaume Marx's Joker A cover. I really like the way he draws the Joker. I like his style. And this was definitely the favorite cover uh, that I was able to grab this week. Uh, but you probably have a better cover. Let me know down below what was your cover of the week. And then as far as read of the week, I'm going with May's book number two from Jeff Lemire. This one's really touched my feelings. It's touched my curiosity. So I'm locked in on this one. Really enjoying this. Can't wait for number three. Uh, but again, I bet you got a better read of the week as well. Let me know down below. That way I'm making sure I'm not missing out on anything because I've got FOMO all over the place. So help me deal with my condition. As always, I really appreciate y'all coming through. Peace, comic book fam.